Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm hoping that you can see all the sketchbook. I've done my very best for this because this sketchbook is quite big compared to my little A4 ones that I've been doing recently. Saying that, I do actually have, well, double the size sketchbooks available for us to be able to look through. But for now, we'll just have to deal with this size sketchbook. So on first glances, I'm gonna tell you, I feel like this is a college sketchbook. So I believe it was in my second year. Not 100% sure, but we'll just have to go. If anyone doesn't know, my name is Laura, if you haven't guessed from the uh, sketchbook <laughs> uh, name. And I'm just gonna be going through some of my old sketchbooks basically from university, college, sixth form, GCSE, all the way down until I can, well, all the sketchbooks that I've had throughout my life really because I found them very insightful and to be able to share with you what my processes is, how I've gone from A to B and you can see me on this journey of how I've developed in towards being an artist which hopefully will be my end game. So without further ado I'm just gonna open this up. It's actually quite heavy and obviously you can see I put masking tape at this back in the old, back in the days I'm guessing I had a problem with it being too heavy. A little symbol up here, you can't quite see it, it's only just cut off, but I mean, I'm not gonna move the sketchbook just for the whole on one thing. Okay, so a lot of paperwork. If any of you don't know, I actually haven't seen this sketchbook opened since I probably made it, really. Flashbacks I can get from this process. FYI, I am wearing my dressing gown because it's absolutely freezing. Still not able to afford um, heating, so we'll just have to go from there. Oh, so this would have been my first year of college, really, because this was the well, the start date was the 8th of October 2013, which was the year I joined college because I did a year of sixth form. Realised I absolutely hated it, but carried it on and did my exams. I got like a B, D, D, pass I think it was the grades were good enough to get into the second year but then I realized well the only the whole time I was there the only thing I was looking forward to was art so I decided to go to college instead I did apply very hard uh, uh, very late another FYI my cat <laughs> she is very needy this morning you might be able to hear her in the background she, there's nothing wrong with her she's just very vocal so yes so here we've got a bunch of mediums and got some Images. No idea what's going on here. That piece I think is actually from second year. I don't know why it's in here. So we're just going we have this, which is yeah, first year. So I think with first year we just went through all the processes of like mark making, artist research, anything. Going back to the very basics of it all to be able to discover what we wanted to do and what we liked and also what we were good at. I got my consent form for a day trip to the Museum of Brands in London. This isn't, isn't until February. We got man made objects. Oh, I went to Pitt Rivers. I remember being very proud of this this well drawing really because I think I did it actually on the day or oh, I took a photograph of it and then drew it back when we were in in our studio there was it was just crammed full of pots and not actually knowing but pottery is one of the subjects that I thoroughly indoor but I never get time well time for it because it requires patience like I said time and there's a lot of processes, so not only from the very start of it, of the research, which it has with every single project, you've got to then produce a piece of artwork. Like if I did it by hand without the clay well, it takes a lot longer because you have to dry it. Then there's the whole drying process, then you've got to paint it, then you've got to fry, then fry it, then you've got to dry it again. And then that's if it doesn't explode in the kiln. So a lot of processes, but again, thoroughly enjoy every single minute of it, but it does take a lot of time. Oh, just for a point of reference, I was 17 at this point, so go 17 turning 18. Cool little, I don't know why I took a picture of that and printed it off. Just some drawings. Butterflies? I have no idea why they're butterflies. 
I think I was just sticking over bits that I didn't like. Armour oh, music. This kind of relates to the whole... Oh, what was it? It just reminds me a lot of Ghost of Tsushima, if I'm pronouncing that right. If any of you got the chance to, please do play the video game. It's absolutely amazing. And it was one of the very first games I platinumed. That's swords. Really cool stuff. And then what? Jim dying. It's a graphite. Scratchy, scratchy mark making. I love how the graphite transfers onto the page, but it works because it kind of goes with the theme of it. This was just a copy drawing of one of his pieces. Went to different styles techniques. So we've got pencil, ink and stick, patching and scribbling. Anyone got a favourite? <laughs> I thoroughly like this one. I think I've got the perspective so much better than the rest of them because this has a lot of thick and thin lines and I really do enjoy that. It just stands out so much better compared to the rest of them. Guess this must be to do with packaging, maybe. But yeah, packaging, advertising. Just drawing bits and how it's recognisable, despite you don't actually need the whole well, image to be there. Bit of collage, Pepsi Max. Just drawing from it. Oh, here's a fun game so all these are from brands and i bet you could probably tell which brands they're from so this one is definitely oh is it that might be mars i thought that's mars that's some sort of dog treat one well, not sure about that that's dove e45 maybe fanta not sure about that one not sure about that one not that one that's jaffa cakes definitely that's coke that's kettle crisps oh that might be Mars as well again. Not sure about that one. Not oh, that one. That one. Quavers. Not sure. Not sure. Not, not sure. I recognise it though. Lucasade. Not sure. Venus actually. It might be Venus. Not sure. Pepsi Max. Oh, so that one, that one, then that one might be Pepsi Max. But obviously you only the Max bit. Yorkie Bar. And I have no idea about the Z. <laughs> We've got some more. Of drawing within the line so this one was drawing the outline rather than the actual object i always love close-ups i don't know why and then we've got some more structure about drawing products one thing i can say about this sketchbook is that it's laid out really aesthetically pleasing like most of the pages are full yes there's one or two that are a bit of a downfall but you can tell that i was very precious about this sketchbook and in my mind, I was beginning to think that this is the end game. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life, whether it be art form related or some sort of creative while well, working within the creative industry. So I've got ooh, drawings upon drawings upon drawings. So we have a mass drawing and then we've got more and more on top. I like the gears and that. It's lovely. A bit of Rembrandt, more whatever that is. <laughs> I think I was trying to like change the logo to turn it or well, invert it basically, just to mess around and experiment what I could do with it. Got some more printmaking. Ooh. And then we've got, I believe it's liner printing with oil based ink. I really like them because there's a really nice groove to them at the very bottom. And then we've got the colour strips that were from, if you can get it, these bits. Another thing I just want to point out is that the fact that these are bigger sketchbooks makes me feel like there's more space and more for me to elaborate. So it's not going from page to page and then you lose the transition between page and page. It's very much all the information's there and it carries on. And then because there's enough information, it keeps the bonds strong between each page 
which these are just really stunning. I really like that one. I think I remember this. I remember wiping bits off in the middle, but then keeping it all grainy and weird. So that one was the pristine, and then these were a bit more experimental. I wonder if I've still got the template. I might have just stuck it in or something. That's got some influence of watercolour. Oh, we, we made like a little box for some sort of packaging. We had these templates and we just stuck images on them using Photoshop to then cut them out and then put them together. It's a shame. Well, I, wonder, I wonder what actually happened to that template. Oh. So I'm guessing from this massive load on the side, this is where we were drawing objects within a minute or two, maybe? Oh, here we go. We were given five minutes to sketch these objects these 11 objects manage to finish just in time for each object drawing small amounts of detail for each didn't carry on the sentence did i so i think we actually had 11 of these and then 11 minutes no 11 of these objects with five minutes in total to draw each one so it's all about getting down the detail of what is important okay so Got some more drawings. This is where we went to like a fashion fashion museum. I believe it was right at the top of Bath where we actually walked. <laughs> and because our college was bang centre in the city centre, basically. Just some drawings of some objects within there. Oh I, I remember this. I I wore the dress, dyed my hair. We've got a clothes show which we went to. I believe it wasn't part of the school, the college trip. I just went by myself because I went, I've been going since I went in school and I just thoroughly enjoyed it because it was a great place to get influence of all the new makeup coming in, all the fashion lines. And I just really enjoyed the shopping spray, to be honest. I was very much into fashion and makeup and everything back in those days when I had time. And believe me, didn't want to cut it out of my life so much. I do still have it about. Now and again I wear a bit of makeup and actually buy some clothes that I really enjoy and keep for all this life until it gets holes in it. How much you kind of cut out of your life because you have to because you're an adult, which unfortunately is what happens. Next up we've got some tribes and Indians. So this is just to do with the fashion. So you've got lots of henna, you've got the outfits. I can't quite remember the names of them. I do apologise. But they are just so beautiful and wonderful to look at and they're so stylish. Oh my god, <laughs> I remember this so well. I'll come to that in a minute. But this is to do with uniforms and how they are can be sexualized or they can be just used for everyday appointments. This is more to do within the fashion industry, so uniforms served the purpose. Back then it was just to keep you clean, and obviously now it's still to keep you clean, but it's for more to do with identifying what area of the hospital you worked with. Then we move to this over here. So Cindy Sherman was an artist who liked to dress up and portray different people with different outfits. So she would dress up as a bloke, she would dress up as a certain Victorian lady or she did something else and we got approached to do this project and they were like, if you want to do it, you'll get some good marks for doing it. You go ahead. And I was like, okay, I'll try this. And I did. I tried it. I mean, it's not very great imagery, but I did. I did. Like, I gave it a go. So top one is Marilyn Monroe. I dressed up as a bloke. I dressed up as some, uh, I don't want to say, what's the right word? Something from the 80s. Then I did something from the 60s. I did some funky makeup and then dressed up in like, I think it's the 1800s. You can't really see the outfit very well because I was a bit modest and not modest, uh, vain back then. But I just loved all my hair. It's great. I remember posting that picture actually. And a lot of people liked it. But that was a long, long time ago. Very good project to do if you're, um, if you got the time. Okay. So more developments we've got. I'm going to say this is going to be a bit more collage -y. So we'll just read this. Pencil. 
Trace the paper plus, plus shapes of nuts and bolts. Oh, for my sketchbook, which are simplified, drawn and abstracted. So those images before of the bolts, nuts and bolts, I abstracted them and changed them into more simpler forms to be able to create a new image. And then we've got them in all different shapes of colours and sizes. Still preferring the prints from before because they're so wonderful and just crisp. And we've got some more artist research because I believe there's a like to do with well Russian communism and then you've got a bit of propaganda Bauhaus coming into it I believe it severely abstracted it to the point where you can't really tell what the main focus is but there is an element of it okay so ideas for final piece we've got some more relating back it was kind of like an overview of what we wanted to do and then we just did some bigger bits obviously these are photo like blown up screens of the drawings that i did of you know the, the saw and i've just replicated them i just printed on them not printed drew all over and then scaled it in put influences in of ink in just trying to find and figure out a way to do it and then got oh a man-made evaluation which the paper but the background looks exciting <laughs> extremely exciting okay moving on to our next project this is a lot this is a very long sketchbook but it's nice to know that i've actually filled it and used every single page which it looks like i have so Inside and out, we've got materials, figuration, artist, nature, and it spreads out into organic. Whoa, <laughs> that must have created some dedication to go all the way. Oh, it's on both pages, so I must have stuck these down and then just put inside out. I mean, it's given me a bit of a headache, I'm not going to lie. But here is the brief. So the start date was the f well, 16th of January. We've got lots and lots of interesting features okay so this is peeling segments of an orange so that's the very start and you peel more and more but you draw in between is the images that i use within this within the class not great images but you know it's fine <laughs> then we've got some more abstracted images Moving on to a bit of collage and influence. Oh, I do like that one. That does something because you've put the inside out of it and you've put the blue on top. And I think the yellow as well is really nice. But this collage bit here is, is lovely to look at. I really find it aesthetically pleasing. You've got the just the shape of it and then you've got the blue, not the blue, the ink, and then you put the collage bits on top. Very colourful elements in this. Oh, here we go. So just using what was successful in that and changing and photographing it into different colours. Which is rather visually exciting. Onions! <laughs> oh wait, it was garlic cloves actually. I remember drawing these and being very proud and we did the same segments of the orange. So we did the drawing of it full and then we tore torn it apart, if that's the right grammar of it images did it in ink as well just to try and experiment a bit more and then we did a load of sweets already i can tell you i'm not really a fan of this page it just looks a bit too i want to fill the sketchbook kind of feeling some more pictures well just trying to collage and change what was there some sweetie drawings I can't look at my wow and not go ma oh wow, but yeah, that's just me. More and more sweets, lots of drawings, trying to change things up by photographing it, cutting it up, and then stick it around, and just doing some some more funky bits and pieces. But trying to do the collage again. I still enjoy. Well, I still prefer the orange collage already. And then we head straight into the artist research. The problem is with having 
these big pages for artist research is that you have to fill it mostly with pictures unless you have a good a sense of what you want to be able to say. A bit of Damien Hirst, the human exhibition and Colina Parker. I believe I mentioned it before about the exploding shed. She got the army, the British army, I think it was, to blow up a shed and that was the remnants of it and she just put it together and shined light through it to create these lovely shadows across the whole of the walls. <laughs> literally, literally just says feeling bag drawings. So I'm guessing my lecturer must have just got us a bag. Filled them up with objects and, and we put our hands into them and we just had to draw what we felt. It's a good technique of being able to warm up, isn't it? And we've got section drawings, you know. <laughs> maybe it's looking into the bag, maybe. Not sure. Oh, so these are the, the objects. So I was just taking lots of different pictures of everything to try and get some sort of composition, but also I think it was to fill up the page as well. <laughs> Bit of Pablo Picasso, Jim Dine again. These are a lot of things. Some images of the plugs. No idea why I got a plug. I'm guessing it's because there's an inside casing and an outside casing. That looks like something from Star Wars. <laughs> and then we've got a mixture of mixed medium. So we've got acrylic, ink, and maybe a bit of charcoal. I'm not sure. No, graphite. It'll be graphite. Moving on to some more artist research. And next we have liner printing. So I actually remember the process of this. We started off with a piece of liner print. We carved in just a little bit of segment. So let's say with this one, printed it, carved out a little bit more, printed that again, again, and then we just gradually, well, I think it was that way, distorted it by overdoing the, the liner print basically, but we did it on different bits of paper. So this is red paper, that's black, and this is kind of a weird card paper just deconstructing an object to create something that we would find visually exciting. I'm also drinking a cup of tea at the moment. <laughs> okay, so drawing, drawings, monotype printmaking. Oh, I remember what mono, monotype printmaking is. So you get drawing, let's say with this one, and you would use a bit of paper to put, so you'd be maybe lined per specs. You have a bit of paper that you want to be able to draw on top and then you have the drawing of what you want to transfer onto that. And it creates these lovely ink stained, like bleeding effect prints, which is just so lovely. You can actually do it with any type of printing ink. Um, I could probably do it with my own printing ink. I think they're very good for doing with still life. So if you've got a really nice still life drawing that you want to evaluate and move into the next level, you can just take the drawing, use a bit of tissue paper to draw the image on, to then transfer onto a different bit of paper by flipping it over, and that will transfer onto the ink as long as you've got the ink on the base of it. I might, that's a good idea, actually. I might have to do that for an art project. Well, not just a project, but also to show people how to do it because it's a very easy process to do. So these ones were inverted. And how I know that is because it's got exactly the same marks that you get. Because every time you press onto it, it will relief. Dressing doors. No idea what happened here. And we've got some paintings by Jenny Savile. This might be where I started a new project. That's where I left the page. Yes, this is a new project. Still yet first year. Oh, so these drawings are from old still life drawings that I did. I'm trying to figure out. I, I don't know why, but I like these jeans. <laughs> I think it's just the the dark and the light, it's right next to each other, so it makes it really lovely to look at. And we've got some more 
bits and pieces. So you've actually got an image down here where I was trying to draw my hand. And then I've got this one. So this is that drawing on the previous page. And then I've put chalk and charcoal on top of it. Or oil pastel to then just give it some validity and movement and make it alive. I do like these hands though. These hands are quite good. Seeing that though, just going off the image, my hands were in a bit of a state. So I was trying to do some sort of collage. I do like the photograph of my hand. Just one of those things you never really realise. I've got some more live drawing sketches. So this is from the live drawing sketchbook that I showed previously on my channel and I tried to replicate it in here. And I've got some lovely colours running through. I really like this green with the white acrylic and the chalk and the charcoal. I'm trying to do something with it. Going through all the colour emotions. I really like these as well. They're lovely. Being aesthetic. Looking at bones because I think my lecturer was like you need to look at bones because you're doing form. And I was like A little bit sticky, and then scars. I was obsessed with putting this knee in, and I don't know why. I think I wanted the element of layering into what was happening. Some more bodies. I think that's the same body, but in two different colours. And then I wanted to try and reveal something within the figure. But I was definitely obsessed with this image because it's just repetitive and it's what I do when I can't finish a project. I repeat the image several times until something comes out. It's a bit like the still life drawing that I did at the very start and I just I was trying to find a way around it and then because I finally got the final image and the final artwork and masterpiece out of it that project's done I don't have to go back to it if you don't know what that is I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out because I do go for an in-depth conversation about it I've got some more colour development I was trying to do something like this to have something different like ins and well, obviously the project was ins and outs. I was trying to find that conflict, and I was hoping for something that was going to land. And then these were two of the final pieces. Found that. Well, I remember talking to my lecturer. I was like, I can't, I couldn't finish the project because I just, I didn't know how to finish it. I didn't know what to do from that point because I added in. I wanted to add in an organic form, which is a human being, with an organic landscape because it's like ins and outs, we are what they are, using the life, life drawing figures. And she was like, it's completely fine if you don't get to a project and you're stuck because you've got the work behind you. Yes, it's not finished. I won't consider it as a final piece because it's just not, that's just not what it is. But that's what happens in art. You, well, I'd say, well, especially now, about 90% of the work I'm, I'm making it's got a good idea, but what it looks visually looks like what it visually looks like isn't good enough. Whereas eventually when you get to that 10% of where it looks good and it's visually exciting, that's when you get starting to head in the right direction. It can also be the opposite. It can look really great, but the concept behind it is just rubbish. <laughs> but that's just personal preference. As long as you can evaluate what you did and turn it into a conclusion. And that is what it is. Okay, so the little presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed that more than I thought I would. So I'm just gonna go back to I 
go back to this page, why not? Okay, well, that's the sketchbook. So that's two different projects within the first year, but very heavy and very intense for well, 17 year old. I love the ideas and the process that I went through. You can definitely tell I spent a lot of time and effort on this sketchbook because I thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. And I mean, going from doing four, maybe four lessons a week in sixth form to doing it four days a week in college just goes to show of how well the whole process is and how much I enjoyed it and how much I wanted to progress. I thoroughly enjoyed the collage of the oranges. I believe that was so colourful and bright and just stunning. So it's one of those processes I'm going to have to carry on or even complete. There's also the mono printing, which I want to be able to, well, do because it's just fascinating. And I forgot how much of a lovely bleeding effect you get from it, especially from printing ink. And there was one more as well. Oh, the use of matte making textures. So like these kind of combinations of acrylic, ink, graphite, chalk, charcoal, all the other lovely bits and pieces from lifestyle drawings, which I can incorporate with my hands. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it informative. I hope it wasn't too long. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. If not, there's also some links in my description box to my social medias to make my same account if you'd like to add me on there or like to buy some artwork. There's also a PayPal donation page as well if you'd like to send a donation that would be greatly appreciated. If not please just like and subscribe it helps all the same. But until then I shall see you guys next time. Bye!